Hey there, before we begin, we'd like to take a moment to talk about physical health and why we're starting the new series of Spirit Science here instead of jumping into videos about astral projection or on the dimensions. The simple version is this, we can't get there if we're all sick. See, health is currently a huge topic of concern in the world and there is really such an abundant need for it. If none of us are healthy, then we will only continue to create an unhealthy reality all around us. So we are establishing the base from which we will be able to grow to new levels of human experience. And this all starts with the root, and that root includes health. So we began talking about health by looking at a fundamental part of health, food. It's time that we continued our exploration into the types of food that, for the most of us, are consumed on a regular basis. Of course, I'm referring to the second largest group of consumed food in the standard American diet, specifically animal food. This will likely be one of the heaviest topics that we go through in this health series. And so this is a bit of a warning that, while inconvenient to look at, doesn't make it any less real. We are moving into, ultimately, the discussion of raising our frequency, healing our bodies, and changing the world. In order to do that, we have to look at all of the information, including how the food that we eat affects our body, mind, and spirit. There is a lot of controversy in today's world around animal food. Is it healthy? Is it unhealthy? And as if it wasn't hard enough to find quality information, we're also bombarded by a ridiculous amount of advertising and conflicting scientific studies. We're going to share with you the best research that we've found, and we encourage you to continue this research to find the deeper truth. Now, before we get too deep into this, we would like to mention the following points. Firstly, we are talking about meat to share the scientific results that have been gathered regarding meat's effect on our health. We are not going to tell you what to or what not to eat, but only show you some information and let you decide for yourself. Second, balance and moderation are extremely important factors to consider when talking about diet and meat. We encourage you to listen to your own body, and if you are feeling unhealthy as a result of your current diet, we invite you to look at yourself and see if changing what you eat has an effect. Spoiler alert, it will. And finally, we're discussing this information to bring awareness and love into such a critical part of human life, our food. Therefore, knowing how to make healthy decisions and take healthy actions is of the utmost importance. We just had to talk about it. Meat is a very large topic. Beyond the different types of meat and meat products, there is also the discussion of the studies linking meat and disease, the massive conversation concerning the agricultural industry, and of course, if it's even morally or spiritually ethical to eat meat in the first place. Today, we are focusing specifically just on the meat itself and the research surrounding it, and we intend to return to go deeper to those other topics in the future. Historically, humans have been eating meat since before recorded history as a mechanism for survival, and we did so seemingly without any problems. So how can something that we have been doing for so long suddenly be so deadly to us? And then why is it that we still keep wanting more? So let's look at the types of meats out there, shall we? When talking about meat today, Generally, it is split up into four different categories, being processed meats, red meats, white meats, and organic meats. Now, processed meats are by far the most dangerous for your health, as many factories will take scraps or other undesirable parts of different kinds of animals, throw them together into a blender, add lots of preservatives, salts, and other additives, wrap them up all fancy-like, and sell it to you as food. Processed meats include your sausages, like pepperoni, and other common products, like hot dogs. It's worth mentioning off the bat that the World Health Organization and the International Agency for Research on Cancer, among other scientific institutions, have officially classified processed meat as a carcinogen, which means it is confirmed to cause cancer. This is based on over 800 studies as of 2015. Red meats are red and come from mammals, including but not limited to lamb, beef, pork, and others. A common source of red meat are dairy cattle, which are no longer producing their milk quotas and are sent to slaughter, as well as the majority of the bulls that are born and raised. Red meats are often considered very nutrient rich, but also contain high amounts of saturated fats. The next section of meats are the white meats. These are the meats that, simply enough, change color to a whitish color when cooked and often even appear white while raw. These meats come from many birds like chicken and turkey, and also include some fish too. White meats are often considered by the general public to be more healthy for you than red meats, as they usually contain less fat and are a leaner source of protein. The last category of meats are your organic meats. These are animals that have been naturally fed and raised without the use of growth drugs or hormones injected into them. The organic label, at least as far as beef goes, also sometimes comes with a grass-fed sticker. This means that the cow was fed its natural source of food, grass, rather than grains, which is what the majority of mass cattle farms feed their cows. 
If you're going to eat beef regardless, ideally this is the kind of meat that you want to get. However, it's very important to make the effort to really find out what the practices are like from the companies that you're buying from. One common discussion in the case for animal-based diets is that people like the Inuit or the Maasai have eaten lots of meat as a staple in their diet for hundreds if not thousands of years, significantly more than the average Westerner, but yet still remain in excellent health. We have found that there is a huge difference between natural meat from an animal found in nature versus meat that has been processed or grown in a factory farm. Further, the lifestyle of the Inuit and Maasai people is a very active one with lots of physical exercise, traveling, and even building snow houses to stay alive. In comparison to the average first world lifestyle, we do not nearly exert the same physical activity as they do. And so if our body isn't going to use it, it's going to store it. This is a big part of our research on animal foods because we eat far more meat than what our bodies are physically utilizing, which is one of several problems. However, beyond that, it seems as though that many new studies are now pointing to the notion that meat in general was never something we were supposed to eat in excess and that we might even not need it at all. The myth that you have to get protein from animals is just that. A myth. And while certain blood types do appear to require animal protein where others do not, even for those blood types, they do not require it to the point of excess. And just in case you need some more convincing, here are several plant foods that contain very potent amounts of protein. Edamame, hemp seeds, quinoa, spirulina, tempeh, nutritional yeast, tofu, lentils, black beans, lima beans, peanuts, wild rice, chickpeas, almonds, chia seeds, steel-cut oats, cashews, pumpkin seeds, potatoes, spinach, corn, avocados, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. And while we're on the topic of dispelling myths, this idea... Do you know what a vegan is? Yeah, so they don't get muscles like this. ...is also a little silly. There are several very prominent athletes, including famous bodybuilders, UFC fighters, and bikers who consume zero animal food and are a picture of perfect health. And these are the ones who are very public about their diet and hundreds if not thousands more who you can read about just by Googling it. Now, here's where things get interesting. There are a large number of doctors and scientific studies now coming forward with research showing tremendous links between meat and some of our most serious diseases. Dr. Rashmi Sinha, PhD, is one such doctor who has correlated a lot of this data in a study she wrote with the National Cancer Institute. Among those studies, we found this, the association between consumption of red or processed meats and cancer, particularly colorectal cancer, is very consistent. The research continues. In 2007, a systemic review of scientific studies led the World Cancer Research Fund and the American Institute for Cancer Research to conclude that red or processed meats are convincing or probable sources of some cancers with specific links to lung, esophageal, stomach, pancreatic, and endometrial cancers, and of course, colorectal cancer. Due to the heavy amounts of saturated fats, meats have also been heavily linked to type 2 diabetes. In addition to that, processed meats also contain preservatives such as nitrosamines, which are toxic to the pancreatic cells that produce insulin. And so diabetes risk is even higher for those who eat a lot of processed meats. But it's not just red meat. A major 2006 study of 135,000 people found that those who frequently ate grilled skinless chicken had a staggering 52% higher risk of bladder cancer than people who never ate it at all. In addition to cancer risks, white meat is also linked to clogged arteries, osteoporosis, and diabetes just by the animal protein alone. Eggs are the same story, where studies have linked eating eggs to stroke, diabetes, heart disease, and prostate cancer. The fat content in meat can also contribute to the estrogen and progesterone sensitive forms of breast cancer. Further, growth hormones used on animals in the production of meat can exhibit estrogenic activity, which also boosts breast cancer risk. Across the board, the World Health Organization has determined that dietary factors account for at least 30% of cancers in Western countries and 20% in developing countries. Apart from the diseases that we've mentioned, eating excess meat can also lead to the following, increased risk of foodborne illnesses being transferred, may contribute to erectile dysfunction in men, may make you resistant to antibiotics, and apparently even increase risk of death. And so what is the cause? Scientists have found that there are three basic causes of disease found within meat. These include too many saturated fats, carcinogens that form when the meat is cooked, and something called heme iron. Let's see what each of these do. Animal-based fats can contribute to the cause of heart disease and stroke by increased plaque lining the walls of your arteries. This makes it harder for your heart to pump blood through the narrowed blood vessels which can possibly lead to a heart attack, putting on extra weight, high blood pressure, and cardiovascular disease. When meat is cooked at high temperatures, carcinogenic chemicals called heterocyclic amines are created that may increase the risk of breast, colon, lung, pancreatic, and prostate cancer. 
Risky cooking methods don't just include barbecuing, frying, and grilling though. Even just baking will lead to significant production of these cancer-causing compounds. The iron in meat is contained in a protein called heme, which can easily undergo a chemical change in your stomach to form carcinogenic N-nitroso compounds, which are associated with colorectal cancer. Heme iron is found in virtually all animal meats, including lamb, pork, beef, fish, poultry, shellfish, and so on, making all animal meats to be a danger in this regard. Is there a safe amount to eat? As we are waking up to the truth of our ways, many of us will begin trying to make continuous improvements to our diets. In doing so, we should take a look at some of these institutions' research and what they say is the right amount of meat to eat, if any. These scientists who do recommend eating meat often recommend between 50 and 70 grams per day or no more than 500 grams per week, which is about the equivalent of three burgers. There are also an increasing number of scientists, nutritionists, and doctors who are beginning to suggest that maybe we just shouldn't be eating meat at all. And really, while many will suggest the under 50 to 70 grams per day diet, there are also studies which show that 50 grams or more per day is linked with an increased risk of cancer and other forms of disease. Ultimately, you have to do what feels right for you. In the beginning, we made the distinction between processed and unprocessed meat. But what we're not accounting for is that these animals across the board, cows, chickens, and pigs especially, but others too, are often being processed as they're growing. From birth, they are taken from their parents, injected with growth hormones, steroids, and antibiotics, kept in confined spaces not allowed to move, and being fed fattening foods which is unnatural for them to eat. It's becoming incredibly difficult to find meat that wasn't raised in this way. And this alone might be the number one reason why animal foods are so toxic to us. Now, we've been going for a while and have to start wrapping up, but there is still tons of research that is very important to know on this topic. So if you want to learn more right now, please go watch the following documentaries. Forks Over Knives, Food Inc., Speciesism, Cowspiracy, Veducated. And for those with a particularly strong stomach and want to see what the animal industries of the world are actually doing, go and watch Earthlings. Be warned, it's brutally graphic. As we bring this video to a close, ultimately we must restate that it is upon you and your own consciousness to decide what kind of diet is right for you. We won't tell you what to eat or what not to eat, only that if health is your concern, you should be equipped with all of the information you can in your mental arsenal to make the best decision for you. This week, we had planned to cover both meat and dairy. However, the topics turned out to be so large that we decided to split them up into two sections. Next time, we will be breaking down dairy and all of the health concerns that come along with it. See you then.